Bill, Sarah, and Kimberly are all the same age, all grew up in the same school, same church here, same Sunday school class. We have pictures of them back in fourth grade and fifth grade and of them when they were smaller and the other kids, Gabby and some others. But there are two kids that were also in there that aren't there anymore. And that is Mark and Lisa Sangree's son, Garth Sangree, who died two years ago this month, sometime in this month. He's in all the pictures, but he's not here today. He's not away at college, he died. Why? My son, Elizabeth and our other son, was in those pictures in fourth and fifth and sixth grade. He's not here today. Why? Because he died of heart disease. You go, all these kids who are now young adults and all in working and doing great, and yet there are already people missing that are gone. And you go, why? Well, it's because either one, two, or three that I mentioned, either Someone caused a problem to them, there was an accident that occurred, or it was the general evil of the world. So I've thought about this an awful lot. And can I give you my answer? And this is just me talking today. My answer, it's not the answer, but it's my answer. And I share it with you, uh, it occurred a few years ago 18 years ago, when I was with our son, and he was dying, he was five years old, and I was standing in a hospital down in Miami, and I was walking back to the hospital room after taking my kids and my parents to the parking garage, and I took him after a long night. Elizabeth was with our son. He was five years old. He was dying, and he was there, and I was at the parking garage. I was walking back through the hospital corridor, a long corridor at Miami Children's through multiple buildings, and there was no one there. It was about midnight, and no one was there. And then at the last corridor where our son was came our doctor who had been there all day, actually had been there two days, and he came walking towards me towards the parking garage as I was walking towards to spend the night in the hard rockers that they have there in the wards. And my head was down, dejected. My son was dying. His head was down. He had four kids that were dying on him. And we met in the middle somewhere in this very surreal moment. And I looked at him and I said, doctor, tell me the truth. And he looked up at me and he said, do you remember the day I met you? I went all the way back to the first day my son was born. He was the doctor that we met, the cardiologist, pediatric cardiologist we met up in Boston at the time. My son was airlifted there the first day of his life. And he said, do you remember that day? I said, yes. He looked at me and said, your son should have died that night. And he dropped his head and he walked off. And for the first time in a long time, I lifted my head and said, thank you, God, for all you have given us. And here's why. Because God only promises you and me today. He does not promise us the future. We plan for the future, we hope for the future. I can't wait to perform some of these weddings and be in these weddings and I'm hoping I'll be at all of this. But all I do know is that God has given me today. And that is what he has promised us. And he has not promised us anything beyond that. And we presume when we ask a why question, the presumption of the why question is, Why didn't you allow that person or whatever to live longer, to do something longer? And that is a presumption that you and I cannot afford to take because God has never given us tomorrow. He has given us today. 